Well hello everyone, this is Tim Stack and in this tutorial I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the basics of CSS or uh, the structure of CSS a little bit to get you familiar with it. And then we'll jump in and, and start doing some practice ex exercises. So um, back in the day, like around 1990, uh, the internet had existed for a while, but it was about this time that the World Wide Web, or the web as we know it now, um, came about. Um, and basically all that means is that uh, that was when we started go f viewing websites, web pages, using a browser. The internet, the actual connections, had been used for uh, much longer than that f to transfer files and, and communicate and such, but this is when it, about the time it became accessible to more people. So uh, one of the things that facilitated that was this markup language called HTML. So HTML is the coding that allows us to format text so that we can read it. Um, and the browser is the tool that actually reads the HTML. <clears throat> now if you're in the Streamweaver Part 3 class, uh, I kind of assume, I am assuming you know a little bit about HTML. Okay, so that stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So let's look a little bit at what um, it did. So here's a document, or just uh, a little capture of some text, and this is the kinds of things that HTML was meant to do. It was meant to do things like um, identify what the title was, so it had heading tags, so I've used the H1 tag, I think, there for the article title to make paragraphs, so just the P tag there. And uh, another thing it was meant to do is to make links. So you can see the, the blue text, blue underlying text there. Um, and that's the hypertext part, that that text could become a link. So uh, when I clicked on it, I could jump to another part of the document or to another page of HTML. So here's kind of what that HTML looks like. Um, pretty simple. So actually you can see I've used the H2 tag. So well, this HTML just formats one of those sections. I didn't put both sections on there, but you can see the H2 tags. Um, when the browser sees the H2 tag, you can see it made the text uh, much larger and bold and created a little bit of spacing. Uh, P tags, again, identifies that region as a paragraph. And then uh, you can see the link tag. The link tag is the A tag, which created a, a hypertext. So. Um, I think you get the idea there, and so that creates this kind of formatting. So pretty simple. Um, now, originally this is what the web was like. It was very text-based, very much like a uh, word processing document, uh, and that was what it was designed for. But it wasn't too long before uh, designers came about and wanted to make these web pages or these web documents look more like um, brochures or magazines, um, look more like they look today. So something like this. So here's that's, that's those same two paragraphs, although I've added a, a photograph in there, a, a thumbnail. Here's those same two paragraphs formatted um, with a little more design going into it. Now, you could create this kind of a look using HTML, but it was pretty complex and you used HTML in a lot of ways it wasn't meant to be used. So if I was to do this with plain HTML, there would be, you know, tables, um, table cells, background colors inside of table cells. Um, uh, this would be f fairly a pain to create. So along came uh, a thing called CSS. Um, and what CSS did is it, it enabled us to let HTML do what it was good at, which was marking up the text and identifying what 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 the that what the objects were, um, which is referred to kind of a, which which is referred to as semantics. So that text that says article title or article two. Um, when I put an H2 tag on that, that means it's a level two heading. So it's a heading. It doesn't the, the heading doesn't have anything to do. The fact that it's a heading or that it's labeled a heading doesn't have anything to do how how it appears. It's just identifying it as um, a heading. Same thing with a link. When I put the A tag around the, those words, um, the A tag identifies those words as links, 
but doesn't necessarily um, say anything about um, the design. Sure, it makes some blue and underline, but that's just the default. Um, whereas CSS or cascading style sheets, which was began it began to be developed CSS by the same people who um, worked on HTML and worked on the World Wide Web, because they knew that designers would soon want to make uh, to have more control over how things looked. So HTML was meant to uh, mark up the text and identify the parts of it, so the semantic parts the structure of the document. CSS is meant to uh, control how those pieces look or the design part, the style part of it. Um, and it, it, CSS gives us a ton of control, a lot more control over HTML. Now it's taken a long time for HTML to finally, I mean, sorry, for CSS to finally get to the point um, where lots and lots of designers are relying on it um, and there's a couple of reasons why it's taken so long one of the reasons why is that the web browsers um, haven't always supported all the capabilities of CSS so um, I've taken those two paragraphs uh, and formatted them using CSS to look more like this so let me just go and you can see what that uh, CSS might look like so you can see that this is the CSS document. So it looks a little different than HTML, but it's basically the rules. So you can see that it says for any H2, if there's an H2 tag on the page, here's what it's supposed to look like. So it's not supposed to have any padding, any margin. It is going to have a bottom border. Remember that green, I'm going to go back. Remember that blue bottom border that goes all the way across? Um, that's not an underline. That's actually a border because that H2 tag, in fact, forms a box. Um, and because it's a box or a um, box, I mean a block, then I can use CSS to tell the bo to turn on the borders, to turn them off. Uh, in this case, I told that I just wanted a bottom border, and then I could define what that bottom border looked like: two pixel wide, solid, and that blue color. Yeah, blue. Um, and also, you can see the bottom thing, it says color equals pound 360. That's the text color. So I'm giving the information for that text as well. That's that green color. So just with that little bit of information, I'm able to format H2 tags. Now, I only do that one time in the CSS, and then any time an H2 shows up on the document, it'll automatically be formatted like this. If you go back, you can see there's, there's article title, and then underneath it, there's article 2. Both of those are H2 tags. But I don't have to format them um, two times. I just write this one rule. This this says any H2s, and that will happen. Okay. If you go down the page there, you can see that there's a P tag, and all it does with a P tag is say, hey, make a left margin on the paragraph, and that's where you get that indent. And you can see how that whole though all the paragraphs are indented. Uh, and if we go down a little bit further, you can see that um, there's some information about an image that says if an image is on the page. Um, then it should float to the right and needs a left and a bottom margin. So that's what creates, puts that image over onto the right side. So it's floating to the right, and then you create a little bit of space around the image so the text isn't too tight. I just put um, uh, 15 pixels of left margin and 15 pixels of bottom margin. And the last thing there is the A tag, which is the makes the link. I wanted those links to match the color of my headers. So you can see all I did is change the color of that and you can see there's the link. The link is the same color as the title. Okay, so um, pretty simple. So we took this document, this is the HTML, so we've taken this HTML document and by just redefining and writing some rules for those existing paragraphs, the H2, the P tag, and the A tag, um, I get this instead of this that plain look. So here's what happens. Take your HTML document, which is basically the content of um, of the page and the semantic structure and all that means is that these tags are identifying um, each object as what it is so article title I got h2 tags around that that identifies it as a level 2 heading the FAQ I've got a tags around that that identifies it as a link and p tags so I take that HTML document uh, and I add a set of CSS rules to it and when those two documents go together to the browser the browser reads both documents and it formats um, the page in the way that I want it so those two things are going to make up our page 
All right, so here's a quick little um, overview of, of these CSS rules. Okay, so for instance, um, if I was going to write a rule that would f that to, f that to format H1 tags, the whole thing is called the rule. And if we break it down into its pieces, you have the selector, which identifies which part in the HTML that I'm um, writing this uh, rule for. In this case, the selector is H1. The dec declaration is all the um, properties that I'm changing. And those properties come in as the attribute and a value pair. So attribute just means, hey, I'm going to change the color. And the value is just uh, what color it's going to be. And you can kind of see the formatting. <coughs> The declaration always comes inside of the curly brackets. So if I had three or four things that I wanted to do, like when I was putting the, the border, the, the bottom border on the H2, um, all of them would go in this one set of curly brackets. Okay, so you identify the attribute, put a colon, put the value in. In this case, it's a color. So I use the hexadecimal um, uh, code there. And then the semicolon in the end just means that I might have another. Um, another property that I want to, to out, another attribute value pair that I want to put in. I don't have to, but I just leave that on there just in case I'm going to write some more. Okay, so that's what a rule is. Here's another example. So here's a rule that uh, that styles the p tag. So I've got the selector. I might I'd ident identify which part of HTML, and then I've got the declaration, which has that attribute that I'm going to um, style and the value I want. Okay, so margin left, uh, 20 percent. So I'm just saying, hey, move this, whole, create a margin on the left side of each paragraph. It's 20 percent. Okay, so a few different selector types. The ones we've been doing are called tags. We are styling specific tags. Okay, so for an example, we styled the p tag, we styled an a tag, and when you do that that will change the pr default properties of every given instance of that tag. All that means if I use the p tag 10 times on a page, all 10 of those will um, follow this declaration that, that they'll all have a 20% left margin. Okay, If I make 500 links on my page, they'll all be this color. Okay, It just happens automatically. Okay, The other kind we have is a class. Um, I didn't demonstrate one of these, but I'll demonstrate it in the next tutorial. So a class, um, I make one of these, and you can see I've, I've named this dot highlight, and uh, that's the um, declaration, and um, uh, uh, that's the selector, and then the declaration is that I want the background color um, to be this color gray, and um, this a class. You create that, and it doesn't happen anywhere automatically. I have to apply it. So let's say um, I wanted one out of those ten paragraphs on a page to have a gray background. Well, I would just apply this class to that one paragraph, and that one paragraph would then follow the, this rule. It would still do the 20% left margin, but it would also have a gray background. And I could do that on five out of the 20. Okay, so that I apply it to the elements that I want to have the property. Okay, and the last one is an ID. So the ID is um, kind of like a class uh, that I apply it to the regions where I want it to happen. But IDs can only be applied once per document. So these are mostly used when you're doing layout um, in CSS. Uh, you create IDs for each region because that region is only going to happen one time on the page. Okay, so those are the three selector types. Okay, as we go on, um, these uh, uh, CSS works on this idea that all the elements, all the HTML, all the HTML, HTML elements on a page um, are either uh, block level or inline. So basically, what that means, for instance, a paragraph tag, a paragraph element. Um, when I when I put a paragraph element around a, a, some text, it really creates a box. Now the box doesn't always show up, but that box goes from c covers the whole line, so from one side of the document to the other. Now it might be invisible, but there is a box there, so I could put background color, borders, padding, margin, all of that can be applied to that box. Um, and there's a couple of examples. The P, P tag um, is a block level element, the H1, and the DIV are H level elements. Um, the other kind are inline uh, 
inline elements. So these are things that do not begin and end a line or do not create a box. For instance, if I wanted to make one word bold, um, I would put the strong tag around that one word and just that one word would be bold, not the whole line. Or if I wanted italics, I would put the em uh, tag around one or two words and those words would be in, in italics but it wouldn't create a box, it wouldn't go from side to side. A couple other um, inline ones, the A tag that creates links, that's an inline element as well, it does not create a box. Um, I can tell it to be a box but by default it doesn't. So um, this is something that uh, these, this idea of block level and an inline level uh, element takes uh, give yourself a chance to get your head around it. Um, and as we do more exercises, you'll start to it'll start to make more sense. Okay, so uh, just a couple more things, and then we'll do some examples in the next tutorial. So this box model or the block model, um, uh, it, it, it there's a couple things you need to understand about it. Is that this box model? Uh, there's there's three main things you want to get an idea about is padding, border, and margin around this around the box that gets created. So you, I've got this one up there, block level elements such as a paragraph form a box as shown by the dash dash line. So if I put a say a p, p tag around this text, it would create that box that's right there. Okay. So now where does um, padding show up. So if I put padding on, the padding shows up outside of that box. So if I told that paragraph to be 300 pixels wide, and then I put 20 pixels of cell, pa uh, 20 pixels of padding on that paragraph, um, I would add that on. The paragraph would now, or that box would now, really be 340 because I'd have 20 pixels in each side. So it gets added outside of the actual object, and then the border is on the outside of the padding. Okay, so if I put a background color in, the background color will be visible underneath the, the object, which is the paragraph, but also the background color will show up where the padding is, um, as demonstrated by my, my little sketch there. And then the border, if I, if I choose to turn it on, uh, goes around the outside of all of this. Okay, so padding and border. Um, this, for those of you who use tables a lot, this is a little different because in a table, um, the padding uh, doesn't make the uh, the table bigger. If you put padding inside of a cell, the cell seems the same size, just the amount of usable room gets reduced. Okay, the last thing here is margin. So margin happens outside of this box, or I should say outside of the box plus any padding or border that has been put on that box. Okay, so if I wanted to indent um, a paragraph, then I would use margin because that would that would that would move the whole block over including it would move over the padding okay so it's the space between the border of a block level element and its surroundings okay so in the next tutorial we'll do a few examples